So my name is Ignacio Cano. I am a senior lecturer at the State University of Rio de Janeiro. I lecture on research methods and then my research areas are violence, human rights and public security. So four years ago um, I wrote an article um, where I suggested the introduction of four measures to diminish the levels of violence in Rio de Janeiro. The first of these measures would be the um, remodeling of the police units that investigate homicides and perhaps the creation of a new unit specialized on that. That has happened to some extent. A department has been created. The number of policemen devoted to investigating homicides has increased. I think we are far from what we would need. and I think the priority that should be given to homicide is not yet there. But it is true that we are in a better position than we were four years ago, where um, homicide police uh, precincts um, or constabularies were very, very small with very, very few policemen and they had the capacity to investigate just very few of the homicides committed in the state. Now their capacity has been increased. They have more men, they have a department, uh, but they're still short of uh, investment for the size of the problem that we have. The second goal was um, try to diminish police use of lethal force, which is actually refueling violence all the time in Rio de Janeiro. Um, we had the worst situation in 2007 where the police acknowledged they killed over 1,300 people. Since then, the number of victims has diminished, but it's still at a very, very high level. We're talking about over 800 victims, fatal victims last year. There have been some changes, though, because, for example, now the police have certain targets they have to meet. And one of the targets is reducing homicides or violent deaths, if you want. And for the first time recently, deaths that are committed by police themselves are included in this overall number of deaths that have to be minimized, which is clearly a step forward. Yet we think we should, again, go further than that, and we need specific goals for reduction of the number of deaths caused by police. This is what we have been asking recently as a result of the famous case of the killing of this boy, Juan. And the government said, they said it in the past too, two couple of years ago, they said they will study these possibilities. Um, they said they will create a commission within the uh, military police to oversee these police killings. But they haven't really launched yet into creating a target of reduction of police killings, which is what we really need. For a state that paid policemen to kill, literally, between 1995 and 1998, and then these awards and promotions stayed on until today because policemen got the right in the courts to keep these special awards. So we need a, a, an opposite incentive, and that hasn't happened yet. The third proposal was creating um, a preventive community policing uh, along the lines of the JEPAI experience that we had had before. And this is the, the biggest improvement we've had. I think the UPPs answer very well to the spirit of creating a permanent policing unit that stays in the communities and avoids violence rather than uh, going in regularly uh, in this war on crime perspective which only caused deaths, insecurity and never solved any um, problem. Uh, regarding public security. So I think in this respect we've had a big advance. Yet we're talking about 18 or 19 UPPs so far and we have hundreds and hundreds of communities. So again it's a partial um, improvement but at least we have an alternative model now which we didn't have in the past and this model is the most visible, the government is investing on it, They're, they have funding from the private sector, they're showing it to the world and it's expanding. Uh, slowly though it may be. So I think this is the area in which we have advanced most. Yes. And as far as internal affairs units are concerned, the improvement has been that now they have a special um, gratification, they have special um, award for working within internal affairs. This is very important because typically policemen who work in internal affairs are not very well regarded by their peers. They're considered to be quote-unquote traitors and they are fighting the police rather than fighting the criminals 
and there is no incentive to work in internal affairs. So they have created, and it's one of the few states in Brazil that has created a pay bonus for working within the um, internal affairs units. That's very good. But the independence has not been reached. So one thing we were demanding is that these internal affairs units should not be linked to the head of police because when a um, accusation comes against the head of police or the highest echelons, there's no chance that it will be really investigated by people who have um, actually appointed those who are in charge of the investigation. So um, the model we want is for these uh, internal affairs units to be linked directly to the secretary and not to the head of the police. The other thing that we want is for them to have a stable position because these policemen who work in internal units will tell you that they are afraid that a year from now they might have to go back to normal policing and they will have to deal with people they, they have investigated themselves and they might even be under the orders of somebody who they have investigated and they, they are of course afraid of reprisals. So they, they don't have stability, um, they don't have special training which they should have and they don't have independence, functional independence, but that they do at least now have um, pay increases, a pay bonus with respect to other policemen. Yeah, I think if I compare the situation now with what it was 15 years ago when I first arrived uh, in Brazil, the situation is better in several respects. Um, the crime rates increase over time but are now on the decline, at least the homicide rate is in the southeast of the country. Um, there's more discussion, more public policies addressed at reducing violence and crime, which we didn't have before. Even our own presence in the debate, like 15 years ago when I arrived, I was called a policiologist, which was a coined term to mean somebody who's not a policeman but talks about public security when he doesn't know anything about it. So that doesn't happen anymore. Um, we are now fully fledged actors in this debate and few people question that we should have the right to participate in it now. Um, we've had a national conference of, on, on uh, public security. I think there's m more debate now, more consciousness of the problems, some policies uh, and in Rio de Janeiro the situation has changed dramatically because of the Olympic Games and the World Cup which is a particular case. But in Brazil as a whole I think there is a growing consciousness and growing debate and a slow increase in public policies to address these issues. That doesn't mean the situation is good at all. If we compare ourselves with the countries we should be compare, comparing, which is, for example, Argentina and Chile and Uruguay, our levels of violence, for example, are far higher. Our levels of crime are far higher. Um, so we have to address that. Um, but if we compare ourselves with what we were 15 years ago, I think we are in a better position now. I, I see some hope for the future. I don't know if the hope will be realized. I, know, I don't know how long it will take, but it's certainly better than 15 years ago, where in Rio de Janeiro, for example, the government was paying policemen to kill. And policemen who killed received a pay bonus of 50%, 75%, or 150% on top of the salaries.